take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take myself and I will be ever only all for Thee. Hello, and a very warm welcome to our act of worship today. My name is Liz and I'm one of the team of laity and clergy serving the churches in and around Kirby Lonsdale. Whether you are with us online or listening in on the telephone, we're so pleased that we can be together in spirit. Our service last week was greatly influenced by the commencement of hostilities between Gaza and Israel. A week on from this, I feel that it is so important that we follow last week's advice from Reverend Anne to turn our worries into prayers, that God will convince all who would wage war that war is futile and discussions of peace are the only way that people will get what they're hoping for. Our reading today finds Jesus in the temple courts of Jerusalem, still trying to teach the crowds about the kingdom of God, whilst the Pharisees were trying to catch him out. On a more frivolous note, only last week my daughter reminded me how important our response to a statement or question can be. I'm sure you too have been caught off guard by something that has made you think, if I say the wrong thing at this moment, I may be in very hot water. My daughter rang me for a chat from her hands-free phone in the car whilst she was sitting in a long traffic queue. She said something that I don't think she's ever said to me before. Hello, Mum. It's your favourite child. OK, we have two grown-up children. They are very different, but we've always been careful to help them as much as we can and to assure them that they, we, we love them both equally. So my daughter presented me with a dilemma. Do I not comment on what she had said, allowing her to think that she is indeed the favourite? Or do I challenge her on the statement and then she might perceive that her brother is preferred to her? I'm not going to tell you how I got out of it, but suffice it to say there was a long pause before I answered. Let's have our reading from Matthew chapter 22 and find out just how Jesus manages a question, the answer to which could so easily have led to his immediate arrest for treason. A reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, but you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Our 
When Jesus was just a boy, a man named Judas led a revolt against paying taxes to the Romans. And it was more than just people being disgruntled with paying taxes. It challenged Roman authority. The Romans crushed the revolt and they were merciless. Uh, People all over the country were crucified. And the message was very simple. Toe the line or you will be crucified. And now Jesus, grown up, going around the country, talking about the kingdom of God and the fact that it was at hand. And for the political authorities, there's a real problem. Is this going to upset the delicate status quo? Are the Romans going to think he's challenging their authority, you know, talking about the longed-for Messiah, his reign and his kingdom? And for the religious authorities, there's a problem. You know, just who does Jesus think he is? You know, by what authority is he saying the kingdom is at hand? And now we're in Jerusalem, we're in the temple And Jesus is talking again about God's kingdom, telling stories about it. In one of them, um, the, uh, the tenants of a vineyard, wicked tenants, kill the owner of the vineyard's son. And the Pharisees see that Jesus is getting at them. He's accusing them of not recognizing God's hand in what he's doing. Uh, But then Matthew adds the note, but they're afraid of the crowds. So they set out to trap him. And that leads to this incident and to Jesus' reply about giving to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. And over the years, it's led people to say, well, this is proof that God and politics don't mix yeah, we should keep out of politics. This coin uh, was discovered in an archaeological dig in Jerusalem in 2016. It's dated around 56 or 57 AD. The image on it uh, is that of Emperor Nero, of course best known for his cruelty. It was Nero who sent Vespasian to Jerusalem in the year 67 AD to quash a rebellion. Nero then committed suicide a couple of years later. There were four Roman emperors after him in just one year. Vespasian was the last one standing, and he was the one who sent his son uh, to oversee the military campaign that em- ended in the destruction of the temple and the end of what the Jews had known as their homeland, their dispersion throughout the empire. And seeds were sown there of what we see happening at the moment. So the coin is a reminder uh, of emperors, of rulers, of empire builders, of cruelty, <clears throat> of destruction, of jealousy, of greed. Uh, and no wonder you know, people have seen in what Jesus said proof that God and politics should be kept separate. Uh, but others have seen in what Jesus said, you know, him saying, well, religion is a thing of the heart uh, and, and God doesn't really mind what we do with our money. But others have said, no, what Jesus was saying is the law is the law and it's our Christian duty to support governments no matter what. And so what do we think? The Pharisees sent their disciples to Jesus along with the Herodians. Now, the Pharisees' position is that they were opposed to paying taxes to their pagan oppressors. King Herod, on the other hand, well, he ruled courtesy of Rome. And so the Herodians' position was that, well, they ought to keep paying taxes to the Roman authorities. So the Pharisees and the Herodians had opposite positions. But they had one thing in common, and that was that they were worried about Jesus. So they set out to trap him. The Pharisees sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, 
We know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. A nice bit of flattery going on there. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Show me the coin used for the tax, Jesus says. And they brought him a denarius. And remember we're in the temple. And to carry a coin showing the image of Caesar in the temple was a sin. Yet nobody should have had one. Jesus couldn't produce one. And yet someone could. Interesting. Whose head is this? And whose title? Says Jesus. Head isn't really the best translation. The Greek word is icon. Image really is a better translation. And a better translation for title is likeness. So instead of whose head is this and whose title, we should really think whose image and likeness. Caesar's, they say. Then give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give back, actually, is a better translation. So give back to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. It's his coin anyway. And give back to God the things that are God's. So what do we think? What do you think? Is it proof that God and politics should be kept separate? Or that Jesus is really saying a religion is a thing of the heart and God doesn't really mind what we do with our money? Or is it saying that, no, it's our Christian duty to support governments, no matter what? And then that phrase, give back to God the things that are God's. You know, what is it that I have that is God's that I'm supposed to give back to him? Well, Jesus drew attention to the image and likeness on the coin. And it points back to the very opening of the Bible, that wonderful creation poem in Genesis chapter 1. You know, and God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. What do I have that is God's that I'm supposed to give back to God? The answer seems to be myself, my unique self. I give back to God for the work of his kingdom by aligning my life with the life of Jesus. And that doesn't mean you know, that taxes and politics aren't important. No, God so loved the world, became immersed in it. They are important. That's the example that Jesus gives us. But the kingdom of God is more than money can ever bring about. It's about faith and hope and love, a life of prayer and of sacrifice and of service. The picture on the title slide today uh, is made of fingerprints, people's unique identity. Uh, the artist Katrina Wong casts her friend's fingerprints in wax and then creates patterns from them uh, that mimic birds and animals. And this is a murmuration. And to me, it, it says something about giving our uniqueness, our individuality, giving it back to God to become his people, to bring about his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So what do we have that is God's, that we're supposed to give back to God? And the answer seems to be ourselves, our unique selves, to give back to God for the work of his kingdom, aligning our lives with the life of Jesus seeking to live out that life of prayer, of service, of sacrifice, with God's help.
power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us bring to the Father the concerns on our hearts. As we continue to watch the developments in the Holy Land, we continue to pray the prayer from Archbishop Hassam in Jerusalem. O God of all justice and peace, we cry out to you in the midst of the pain and trauma of violence and fear which prevails in the Holy Land. Be with those who need you in these days of suffering. We pray for people of all faiths, Jews, Muslims and Christians, and for all people of the land. While we pray to you, O Lord, for an end to violence and the establishment of peace, we also call for you to bring justice and equity to the peoples. Guide us into your kingdom, where all people are treated with the dignity and honour you to your children, for to all of us you are our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we continue in our prayers, we continue to pray for peace in so many other ways and in so many other places too. Where people live in fear as a result of man's inhumanity to man, those caught up in the midst of conflict or who live under oppressive regimes, may they know your peace and hope and may the leaders of the nations act with wisdom and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where people live in fear as a result of climate uncertainty and natural disaster, may they know your peace and hope. And may those working to help have the resources they need to make a difference now and in the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where people live in fear as a result of economic uncertainty, may they know your peace and hope. And may those working for a better future work well and for the good of all and not just a favoured few. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where people live in fear as a result of illness, of body, mind or spirit, may they know your peace and your hope. And may those caring for them have the resources they need to make a difference. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where people live in fear as they watch and wait alongside those they love who are suffering or dying, may they know your peace and hope and may they be able to support and encourage those they love and care for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And where people live in fear for the future, as they try to adjust to a changing world, especially those who mourn the loss of one they love. May they know your peace and hope for the future and find the support and encouragement they need at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we gather together our prayers those spoken and the silent prayers and yearnings of our hearts 
as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you to everyone who has helped shape this service. It's been wonderful to be here with you today. I thought I'd end with some questions to think about. I wonder which part of today's service has connected with you most. I wonder which part of today's service has connected with you most. What would you tell others about today's Bible story or message? What would you tell others about today's Bible story or message? Look forward to sharing this time together again next week. God bless. Just the same.